Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today we're going to take a look at some ammunition that's falling over. Uh, today we're going to take a look at some uh, scientific, uh, I think I'm justified in using that term for what we're doing today, some scientific testing of ammunition. Specifically we have surplus Ethiopian 7.62 NATO ammo. Now I have this because Century International Arms is, has imported a bunch of it, and they are starting to sell it, and they approached me and asked if I would do a video on it. And I thought about this and decided, yeah, we can do something that is interesting and useful, uh, and take advantage of the fact that they're going to give me some free ammo to do it with. So uh, first off I should say, I well we'll talk about the history in a moment. Uh, we're going to break this testing up into a couple of, of uh, categories. We're going to take a look at the packaging. Like, how does this stuff actually look on the outside? Then we're going to go do some shooting and uh, record uh, muzzle velocities, uh, or bullet velocities. Uh, and then we're going to bring it back, pull down some cartridges, weigh the bullets, and calculate uh, average, average bullet weight, average velocity, and standard deviation for both to get some idea of how good is this ammo? What can you expect from it? So. Uh, Hopefully we'll get some, you know, if there's anything weird going on with the shooting, we will get that. Uh, we'll experience that when we're doing the, the chronographing. Uh, and um, I should say we're not doing accuracy testing, because there are way too many factors that go into accuracy testing. Uh, you know, the gun contributes a whole lot of factors. If I'm going to be doing this on a bunch of different gun, uh, different, different cartridges, different calibers, I would in theory need to have a bunch of really good bench rest quality guns in all sorts of weird surplus calibers, and that's not going to happen. So instead we're going to use uh, the velocity and the bullet weight as stand-ins for mathematically repeatable numbers that we can use to compare ammunition quality. So that's why there will be no accuracy testing. Uh, in fact, beyond just the gun, also the shooter. Uh, uh, there hopefully is a bunch of ammunition out there that shoots better than I can shoot. So we're not going to get into trying to actually calculate group size uh, for this. That's not scientific or repeatable in this context. So uh, let's go ahead and start by taking a look at the packaging. All right, this stuff is packaged in 30 caliber ammo cans. They are conveniently labeled in English on one side. Uh, 280 cartridges, ball, 7.62 NATO, etc, etc, etc. Lot number one. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, manufactured 77 through 85. Now if we flip this ammo can over we have a marking in a, a rather distinctive Ethiopian script. This is not Arabic, this is definitely not English or any of the, uh, the Latin languages. This is Ethiopian script, and uh, the data here translates to kind of the same thing. 280 rounds, 7.62 by 51 millimeter, 20 rounds per box. Return this box to MED, which presumably is some sort of acronym for you know Ethiopian logistical supply centers. <laughs> so yeah, don't throw the ammo can away out in the field, bring it back. Inside there we have ammunition packaged in blank 20 round cardboard boxes, a little bit of tape at the top. Go ahead and slice that open. There you go, there are your 20 rounds. Head stamp on these we have a two digit date code. Uh, these look like they're mostly 79s. The, the other cartridges I've opened and used have been 78s, uh, but of course as the can tells us these were made from 77 through 85, so there may be a bit more of a mixture in this packaging. Uh, and then there is a three character, well, code here. Uh, those three characters basically stand for Haley Selesi the first. When Century first told me they had Ethiopian ammunition, I assumed it was you know, some sort of European manufacturer uh, sold to Ethiopia and then surplused by Ethiopia. But digging into it a little bit, it turns out no, there actually was a, an ammunition factory built in Addis Ababa um, in the late 1940s with Czechoslovakian technical assistance. It was named the Emperor Haley Selesi Ammunition Factory, and uh, that's where the, that three letter code on the head stamp comes from. It's given a little bit of weirdness in Ethiopian script. Um, apparently each, each character kind of stands for both a consonant and vowel sound. Anyway, you put that together it, it means Haley Selesi uh, Ammunition Factory. Uh, by the way, the Ethiopian military at this time was using a couple of different 7.62 caliber rifles, in particular uh, Beretta BM-59s and M14s. So that's what they actually made this stuff for. If we take a look at the cartridges, 
uh, they look good. There's nothing really, they're, they're a little bit dull. You know, they've obviously been in storage for a while. Um, but nothing here that would make me really suspicious, uh, nothing that would raise concerns to me. We have some red primer sealant in there, which in theory should help help them last a little bit longer. Uh, there is some evidence of, uh, of a sealant uh, inside the case neck as well, but we'll see that a little bit later on when we pull this ammo apart. All right, now we can go out and do some shooting. And the shooting I am doing here is with a, an Israeli uh, K98K Mauser rechambered to 7.62 NATO. Uh, this has a 23.6 inch barrel length, for those of you who are going to be uh, messing with the numbers for velocities that we're going to get. Uh, and I picked this because it is bolt action, it's a K98K, it's a very safe rifle. If this am ammunition is like heavily overcharged, this isn't going to blow up. If it does blow up, it's going to do so in as safe a manner as possible and won't hurt me. So that's what we're going to use. Let's go see how it shoots. Two, six, four, one. Two, six, two, nine. Two, six, two, nine. Two, six, four, six. Two six zero six, and a couple of those were hang fires. I noticed just a brief delay between pulling the trigger and the round going off, and that's not a good thing. Let me load five more. All right, number six. A little bit of a hang fire there too. Two six six three. Another little brief hang fire. Uh, two six one six. Two six seven nine. Ooh, that was a definite hang fire. Two five four six. A little bit of a hang fire again. Two six three seven. Little bit of a hang fire, two six eight nine. Definite hang fire, two six five one. Two six three zero. Hang fire, two six four six. Definite hang fire, 2649. Alright, so the results of our shooting are, I have some, some cheater notes here. Uh, let's see, we had an average velocity of 2637 feet per second. Uh, we had an extreme spread of 143 feet per second, which gave us a standard deviation of 33.29. Uh, we had uh, lowest end was 2546, and the highest velocity was 2689. So, in terms of velocity, that's a fair amount of extreme spread. Um, I'm no expert in, in really good hand loading, but my understanding is good hand loading will get you in the 10 to 15 uh, range for standard deviation of velocity, and decently, you know, acceptably good factory ammo is 15 to 20. So this is substantially above and beyond that, and I suspect that's due to the age of the ammo. This is uh, 50 years old, this is all head stamp 1978. So, eh. Now, a bigger concern to me perhaps than the, the, you know, the, the consistency of the velocity was actually the hang fires that we got. So we got a lot of hang fires in this, close to, if my memory serves, and you can back me, check me up on the, uh, the video there, between a third and half of the cartridges exhibited some, uh, some range of hang fire. So a hang fire is when uh, there is a, a delay, more than a normal delay, between when the striker hits the primer and when the primer actually detonates the powder charge in the cartridge. Now when they're really bad, these can be several seconds long and can be quite dangerous. Um, 
a, a bad hang fire if you uh, you know if you have a hang fire that's a couple seconds long and as soon as it goes click you open the bolt and eject the round you have a very real potential of that round detonating while it's flying through the air after being ejected because that primer is slowly sizzling away and still working on igniting the powder charge none of these were anywhere near that bad you know we're looking at fractions of a second here what we had was uh, you know click bang sort of hang fires that's not really a safety issue, but it is a marksmanship issue. Um, that is a good way to have problems shooting good groups, and it's not a sign of well-stored or high-quality ammunition. So that concerned me. That's overall, from what we're going to see here, that was my biggest qualm with this ammunition. So uh, let's go ahead now and we'll take a look at the components and what our bullet weights were. Pulling the bullets, uh, what we see here is we have a, a boat tail. Uh, open base bullet. This is lead core. It's a, a steel and gilding metal jacket, so this does drag a magnet um, if you have ranges that are concerned about that. The scratches there, by the way, are from me using a pair of pliers to pull them out because I couldn't find my kinetic bullet puller. Anyway, um, so ignore that. When it comes to uh, numbers, I pulled 10 of these and weighed them all out on a, a nice little calibrated electronic scale. We have an average weight of 143.4 grains with an extreme spread of 1.7. So our lightest bullet was 142.7, our heaviest bullet was 144.4, and the standard deviation came out to 0.52. And that is really pretty darn good. Um, that's, that's a well-made bullet. Now, I don't have any way to assess the quality of the manufacturer inside, whether there are any voids or how consistent the thickness of the jacket is. I that I just don't have a way to, to scientifically determine. So we'll have to go with just weight uh, for the purposes of this video. Lastly, you can see some of that black marks there. That's uh, what used to be some sealant between the bullet and the case mouth. The powder used in this is a, a stick type powder. So I've got a picture there you can take a look at. All right, so there's your overview of Ethiopian 1970s production 7.62 NATO as currently being sold by Century. Uh, because Century is a huge import company, I'm sure they will have a whole bunch of intermediate wholesalers and retailers, so you may find this all over the market. I don't know how long it will take to really get out there, and I don't know how much of it Century has actually brought into the country. So, uh, I'm, unfortunately, I suspect Century is not going to be too thrilled with the, uh, the results of this testing, but I'm not here to make them happy, I'm here to convey to you guys uh, exactly uh, the information that I found. So hopefully you find this valuable. Um, we will continue with, uh, I think if people like this, if you like this, let me know in the comments, because I think this has the potential to be an interesting longer series to put together a, a more thorough encyclopedia of some of the, of the various surplus ammunition that comes in and out of the country, so people can really get an idea for what is the good stuff and what is maybe the less good stuff. Anyway, thanks for watching, I'll see you tomorrow.